Two-phase direct-to-chip cooling is when you bring a fluid, usually a refrigerant, operating near its boiling point to a chip and allow it to actually boil on the chip in order to remove its heat. Uh, that fluid then ultimately gets circulated to a condenser where it's returned back to its liquid form and then allowing the process to repeat. Um, Two-phase cooling is very interesting because of its uh, ability to remove more heat than other single-phase forms of cooling where you don't have that boiling process. The boiling process inherently uh, allows this enhanced mixing along with removing heat at a higher effective density since vapor can carry a lot of heat that ultimately gives you that higher performance. The TCO-based arguments for anyone considering using two-phase cooling today in 2025 are related to the performance and reliability of two-phase cooling. Due to the improved thermal performance, chillers are able to operate at higher facility water temperatures and less often throughout the year, saving on energy and water. The fluid used in two-phase cooling do not need any maintenance. Unlike water, which needs periodic change out, additives, and other things to prevent biogrowth, corrosion, and other issues, the sum of these expected operating costs shows that a two-phase cooling system has about an 18-month payback over single phase. And on top of that, and in many cases even more important from a TCO perspective, is the cost of fluid leaks. For two-phase, the cost of any leak is nothing, and it will never be anything, since the fluids are inherently dielectric and cannot do any damage to your hardware. For single phase, assuming a 4% leak rate that seems to be conservative based on the discussions we have with all of our partners, and assuming that a rack today costs about $3 million and it's only going up, the payback of going with two phase is only a few months. Now I wanna focus on the exciting long-term argument for two phase cooling. Every generation of chips that comes out has a significant increase in compute performance, but ultimately every generation is also harder and harder to cool. For instance, going from an NVIDIA H200 to B200, the most recently released GPU generations, showed anywhere from 127% to 355% improvement in compute performance. Now imagine you can't go to that next generation of GPUs with single phase cooling, because you don't have the initial the thermal headroom required to go to that generation. In that case, the TCO improvement of using two-phase cooling that does have the headroom, combined with the cost of the thermal solution relative to that total compute hardware cost, results not only in a TCO payback of a few months, but perhaps even a compute capability that can't even be easily quantified. And as we see two-phase cooling having at least one, maybe two generations worth of thermal headroom, along with the short-term improvements that we just discussed, the TCO-based argument for two-phase cooling uh, really shows it to be the inevitable standard as time goes on. We founded Excelsius about three years ago with a, a sort of a specific purpose in mind. We knew liquid cooling was going to be adopted in data centers for um, necessary reasons. Ships were getting hotter, heat fluxes were getting more dense, etc. Um, but we wanted to do it slightly differently than the other competing architectures out there. We wanted this to be future-proof. And what we mean by that is that most sophisticated data center operators understand that ships are getting hotter, almost exponentially so, and probably more importantly, heat fluxes, and that's the concentration of watts per square centimeter, are also increasing to the point where some other cooling architectures are gonna struggle to keep up. We wanted to make sure an investment in a new cool solution was protected over a few generations of the future ships. And we've done that um, largely with our two-phase technology and harnessing the power of that and the solution design. We wanted to design our solutions, all of our product lines, with serviceability, resiliency, and redundancy in mind. So we did not want to force data center operators to change their service and support protocols. If they want to hot swap a, a server, they can do that. But most importantly, with our solution, a low level technical person, the low level technical staff that is typically doing maintenance or swapping within a data center can easily swap in or out any of the essential components of our solution. 
And we've designed that so data center operators who have a lot of experience in this see our solution and think, okay, that just fits in with our, our current protocols without any massive change or without any massive training requirements. Finally, um, we know that the data center sector, the operators out there are challenged. They have to evaluate and compare new power conditioning architectures, new cooling architectures, and we want to be there for them. So we've designed the company around that. We want long client relationships that are, are built on trust. We have an excellent support and service organization, excellent deployment organization. We can educate our clients and our partners as well. And this is made more robust by a global set of world-class integration partners, value-added resellers, et cetera, that really reassure and, and underpin a very um, good solution with very stable support globally.